but he is going back to his roots. I believe Kuroki will start playing core again as well, which is what he got. Ex he was widely regarded as the best player in Dota at one point, oh, playing solo mid mainly. Okay. Um, and that means, how do we place the others? Is it going to be Big Daddy support with Puppy and S4 in the off lane, or is S4 still playing mid and Kuroki's off laner? Well, yeah. I guess we'll have our, our answer pretty it, soon. It's a good question. When we talked about it on, in the studio, uh, we had sort of seven, thought seven, that seven, Kuroki seven. would be back on carry um, and something more like Fly on the off lane. Five but seconds, uh, as I've talked to more folks, it seems more likely that Fly will actually be the carry. It's really hard to say, and this is one of those that uh, I think we'll just have to be a little patient here and wait for the draft to commence and figure out what's uh, what's going on here. But an judging interesting from oh, the oh, go ahead. Uh, judging from the first pick, Io, I would say it's probably Big Daddy on support. That's mm -hmm. not to say Kuroki doesn't play a good Wisp because he really does. He's played it a lot and he's extremely good at it, just like Big Daddy is. But we're expecting him to be in a core position. So the fact that they pick it this early. It's not one of Puppy's favorite supports by any stretch, I think. He generally doesn't play it. So if they pick it that early, it's probably Big Daddy supporting. Yeah. And it's interesting to see the, the IO Tiny opener. Not many teams right now are even running Tiny IO, except for very specific niche strategies. And to have it first picked uh, in that opener is Alliance just a rarity. And I'm already excited to see what they have in store for the rest of this draft. Some of the, the classic pieces of Fnatic here being transferred to Team Secret. Yeah, this is, um, hmm. The opening for Alliance is very standard, though, right? The Skyrath Void was kind of a flavor of the first week of TI4. I said TI4. I did it this time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, All right. Yay, I'm learning. <laughs> uh, but it kind of fell out of favor during the tournament. Later, in the later stages, these two were not really picked that much together. But it seems like Alliance still wants to, uh, to stick with it. And... Io Tiny is such a classic combination that you, you really can't deny that whenever No Tail plays the Io in that lane, it just seems like it goes out of control. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see Kuro and, uh, and Big Daddy grouping up in the mid lane with that dual lane, for example. But I also want to point out was Chessie drafting in the previous game for Alliance? Or was it someone else? Because it's very unusual that someone who stands in and is rumored to join the team suddenly takes over the drafting when it's his first competitive Dota 2 games. Yeah, you know, actually someone That's tweeted at me after the first game and said, you need to tell us who the drafters are because the overlay covers it up, and I honestly did not look at it in the first game. So I, I have to say the, the sorry I don't know here, but you're absolutely right. A stand-in and also a player who is sort of new to Dota 2 in the context of most of the other players around here as he's just switched from Honda. So to see him drafting is shows that Alliance have a lot of faith in Chessy, or you never know, it could also just be the team effort and he happens to be the one uh, clicking the button. A little hard to say, but interesting nonetheless. Yeah, and I have to apologize to the people watching in-game because me restarting Dota 2 apparently switched off my open mic. So that, it wasn't on issue. until now, but now you can hear it. At Thanks least we're again, in Dota TV this chat. time, though. We're we got our out. issues dealt with. Or actually, I, I don't know why I'm saying we. You got your issues dealt with. I was ready to rock and roll. That was, that was We all know fail. you have issues, too. <laughs> yeah, it's true enough, true enough. <laughs> I'm not even going to deny it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alliance will settle on Viper for their third pick here, another... Viper showing, and of course a strong lane dominator here to try and help deal with um, possibly a tiny IO in the mid lane. But whoa, Team Secret with Bane, another hero we haven't seen a hell of a lot of recently. Yeah, wondering what the what the reasoning is so far. There's no obvious reason why you would get Bane so far. There's no well, you can enfeeble Void or Viper in the lane, which is a really big problem for them since they only have physical damage. So that could be part of the reason. Uh, but there's no sort of classic combination here with Bane so far. Could be uh, a Marana 4th no, pick that Could be a Marana 4th. I was about to say, that's definitely an option they have. And remaining. Well, if they wanted that, they could also pick the Marana first and wait with the Bane, because what are the Five odds Alliance gets a Bane Skyrath combo, but maybe they feel like they would be giving more information away um, yeah. by getting the Marana pick. It's... Yeah, it could be anything right now. It could really be anything. The yeah. reasoning here. Maybe it's something we're not thinking about at all. Mm-hmm. Well, so Alliance will, they seem a little stumped as well. They'll burn most of their reserve time here and finally settle on the Earthshaker as their Radiant second support. Team pick. Hmm. So, Earthshaker, Skyrath Mage. It's the support duo we saw played in the previous game from Album Sheet. They weren't really that successful with it. We'll see if Alliance can, uh, can do a better job. What I like about their Void draft, we were talking about in the previous Alliance game why they shouldn't pick Void. This is a really good Void draft. Skyrath Mage is an excellent synergy. They have a mid laner, probably the Viper here. Um, which is great synergy because he's 
ranged and can hit people inside the chronosphere. And then you have Shaker, who's, yes, the Echo Slam is, with, is very hard to pull off very nicely with the chrono, but it's great to have the Fissure to set it up or to have the chronosphere followed up by a Fissure for the extra stun and then you blink in for the, for the Echo Slam. So all of Alliance's lineup is very well-rounded, good support duo, good cores. But how well do they fare against an IO Tiny? I'm still missing that kind of counterplay from Alliance apart from Fissure. Yeah, I mean, Disruptor is kind of an obvious uh, support counter against the Lisp that some teams like to run. It also has some okay synergy with the Void, but okay, Team Secret, they Alliance go for the Storm Spirit here as uh, their second core. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a bold pick when you're picking it into a Fissure, a Skyrath Silence, and a Chrono. Yeah. But it could work, and it's, it just goes to show that like, we were also surprised by the Bane, and we don't really know what to think, so I would assume it's the same for Alliance. Like, they don't know what they're dealing with, like I, what are I, the plans. I wonder if the Bane is kind of bait for a fifth ban Marana here, if they have something else in their sights. That seems like the obvious ban, but I think if Team Secret really wanted the Marana, they would have picked it fourth. Storm Spirit, I, I just feel like, was not a very likely fifth ban from Alliance, if that's what they were afraid of. I agree 100%. So they, whoa, uh, Elder Titan, okay. So a totally one. different approach from, or Alliance at least is taking a different approach to this draft. Well, since Secret is on the Radiant, they could run an Elder Titan offlane with great success, and Alliance are assuming that it's the offlane they're missing, which seems likely at this point, right? Bane is usually a support, Io Tiny is pretty much the classic lane, and then Storm Spirit will never go in the offlane. So yeah. what I'm thinking right now is whether Secret are actually thinking about running a Bane offlane. And the reason I am is because he's Radiant. That's the he's only reason, else I would never consider it. But on the Radiant offlane, Bane could actually go and leech some experience, just block the wave, try to do some shenanigans and bother Alliance up there in general. And then if he comes in range, he can enfeeble the Void and mess up his farm. Yeah. Uh, and then they can run another support, because as far as cores go, Tiny and Storm easily carry into the middle late game without a problem. So the offlaner... Hmm. Whoever it is, whether the last pick is the offlaner or the bane, does not need to have core qualities. It needs to have disables or control for the early mid game, and then they're good. Yeah, I worry about bane in the solo offlane, even on the side of radiant with a, a skywrath and earthshaker. That's a lot of long range and just a lot of Alliance burst damage they can put down. Um, and even void has a gap closer. It it'll be a struggle. Not impossible, but it'll be Strug City up there, and maybe it'll all come into focus as we see these final picks come out. But Team Secret will opt to ban out the Slark with their final. What do Alliance need? Uh, I think they might actually want their last hero to even be another counter to the Storm. Or to deal with Iotani. Now the yeah. obvious choice for that, like you said, Disruptor would have been a really good pick. But I think they're, they're looking for a core. It and could be I, a core Skyrath. Or be. Disruptor. Or Skyrath core, yeah. Yeah, so it could still be a Disruptor last pick if they wanted to go solo mid. Uh, with Nick, the huh? Skywrath and then um, offlane the Viper. That's they don't have a great offlaner for the dire side right Ten now. That's seconds. that's what I worry about. Tide would have been a, a really solid offlane choice, but of course he's been banned out Five by Team Secret. Remaining. And Alliance will have to decide here in just a couple of seconds, and they'll take the Marana. I guess afraid that Secret were Radiant angling for it, and pick. maybe they're playing right into Secret's hand here, as we were talking about moments ago. It's really not an easy game to be Marana offlane if she's solo going against Bane with any sort of hero who's dependent on that kind of escape ability is so difficult because the way you usually deal with playing the offlane is that you know there's some sort of limit of how far you can go because pretty much every single hero that has a disable on level one the stuns are generally between one and a half and two and a half seconds, seconds right remaining. but Bane's is four and that means that whenever you get the positions you're usually safe in you're not safe in against Bane and for Marana that's extremely important because that means the the gap you're used to being able to close with Leap just isn't the same anymore. Mm -hmm. And if they want to run an offlane solo, I think any of their heroes will actually get crushed. <laughs> so maybe they're thinking about an aggressive trial lane, or they feel like they can completely sack one of their heroes, but then who would you choose? Do you want to have a very low-level Marana against these kind of heroes? There's so much catching power on Secret. Storm, yeah. Relocate, Hookshot, even Fiend's Grip. Like, it's not an easy game for Marana to come back in. Or do you try the aggressive trial lane? Yeah. Alliance did it last game. Uh, yeah, it, it's a good question. Maybe they'll go for the aggressive tri lane. They certainly have some kill potential with Marana, Earthshaker, and Skyrath. Ten seconds. Really. I honestly feel like that's their best bet because I, I don't see any way they can put someone solo down Five there and not have them be completely zoned out. Even if they don't concede any deaths, 
we're, we're looking at a you know zero experience, zero last hit kind of a scenario, and none of these heroes really retreat to the jungle. That's one of the powers of the Bat Rider, where he can find that recovery in the jungle, but none of these heroes really have that luxury. So we'll see, but uh, in interesting. The, the casual Bane pick. It will be Puppy on the Bane, Big Daddy, of course, on the Wisp. That leaves us with S4 on the offlane clockwork here, rocking the uh, RoboCop skin. I like the way that looks. Uh, we've got... Fly on the Storm Spirit. He's tagged up as Pifa. Wa I don't know what the hell that means, but uh, he is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is Fly nonetheless. And it will be Kuroki on uh, the core tiny here in the mid lane with that very strange uh, one cosmetic, but it is the Immortal Crystal Dryad that looks just so derpy. It looks funny until you get the <laughs> tree, and it looks real. Uh, yeah. And for Alliance, they're all smoking up into the Radiant Jungle. It's going to be Loda playing the Mirana, so kind of a hint that it's not a solo offlane Mirana. Misery will be playing as the Earthshaker, Aki. Onto Skyrath Mage, Admiral Bulldog on the Void, interesting, and uh, Chessy will be playing the mid lane once again with the Viper as in the previous game. But is he really though? Because those items on Viper do not look like a mid lane Viper build. No, certainly not. Uh, the Ring of Protection is usually a side lane opener so you can get that fast Basilius and then fly out the Aquila. Oh, mid lane doesn't work quite oh, the same help. way. Some trees will get cleared out here as Big Daddy comes forward. Fissure on two, arrow flies through, they split. If that arrow had hit, it would have been a first blood, but it will whiff, and Alliance will be unsuccessful in this invade gank. The, the gank itself was unsuccessful, but they managed to put out the aggressive ward, which is a big part of the invasion. You, know, you don't invade with the intention, generally, of getting a kill, because it's unreliable. Maybe the enemy team isn't there, or you just fail the gank, or they have really evasive heroes. But mm -hmm. the main reason for invading is to block the jungle and set the tone of the lane. And it is indeed going to be an aggressive trial from Alliance, so they want to block the pull here and generally just get some intel on the Radiant Jungle so they know what they can get away with here. And with an Invis Rune on Misery here on level 1, Storm is very fragile in the early stages of the game. Low health pool, he's got 5 armor, which is decent, but he could very easily be the victim of the first blood here with a good fissure. Yeah, and look at Misery's positioning. He's ready to block them in. Storm very elusive once he hits level go. 6, but this will be tricky. They'll go for Puppy instead. Storm will walk away, and do they have the damage to bring him down? Loda connects with the point blank arrow. It's not a very long stun. A few more right clicks will bring him down. First blood secured, as Ake is the one that grabs the additional gold. So already the aggressive trial lane from Alliance uh, working well, but can they do it again is the question. The invisibility rune giving them the edge they needed there to make it a pretty easy kill. They're playing three on two, so they better win this lane, right? <laughs> um, the question is what the trade-off is. Alliance has chosen to put Bulldog in the mid lane with the Void, and he's going to have a hard time against the dual lane, obviously, but just in the very early stages, Void, Void is a surprisingly strong laner. With a stout shield and with backtrack, it's hard to deal significant damage. And importantly, against something like Avalanche, where you have often have heroes, or a hero like TA comes to mind, where having multiple instances of damage is a really good way of dealing with refraction, but the defensive capability of Void is purely based on chance, nothing else. So having multiple instances of damage is not better or worse than having one big source against the Void, mm -hmm. in theory. Or, well, depends how lucky you are with the backtrack, right? I don't, uh, yep. well, depends oh. how you look at it. But regardless, he's going to be getting something here in the mid lane, and then the top lane, Alliance have a Viper against the Clock, which should be a very easy lane for the Viper. It should be, but right now the CS is even. 6-3 on uh, a piece, basically. Clockwork sniping some last hits with the Rocket. He is going for a Rocket Flare primary build, which is keeping him in the lane, at least for now, but we see S4 getting zoned out by Chessie, and as experience comes out, it should get more and more uh, one-sided for Viper. We see him actually skipping Corrosive altogether, getting those extra points and Poison Attack just to harass that much more effectively. But and Bottom lane. Fly has been managed. He has managed to get boots and level three here. He's going to get fissured off, though. Very nice oh, fissure wow. from Misery. Arcane Bolt flying through all the follow up damage. Loda has an arrow available. Can he connect? He certainly will. Beautifully done. And it's another kill in this tri lane for Alliance. And that'll take Team Secret down 0 2 to get things started. The aggressive tri lane so far from Alliance has proven to be a great investment. The big lane for, uh, for Secret to, to come back, I, I don't really want to talk about it as a comeback just yet, but. You know, they're, they're off to a pretty pretty bad start, losing two heroes in the bottom lane, but Io and uh, and Tiny can just make these incredible early mid-game performances. And how much are they getting? It's 10 CS on the Tiny, 6 on the Void of Bulldog, actually, so he's, he's getting pretty good farm. Like, no one actually is getting really good farm in the mid lane, but all things considered, I, I would say definite advantage alliance. And also based on the top lane where Chessy will now, when he's starting to reach high levels, this clockwork will not stand a chance in the lane. Yeah. 
Uh, Puppy is smoked up right now. Only level 2, but has a point in Nightmare and Brain Sap. Skipping and Feeble all together. That was something we mentioned in the draft. Is A lot of utility Bane can put out early on and possibly why they picked him up. But he'll go aggressive. Nightmare to get things started. Kuroki is level 4, so can do a fair amount of burst damage. But Skywrath has already TP'd in. They won't even go for it. Just harassing Bulldog, and he'll be forced to time walk to safety. But an, an odd setup there. I, I guess they did the math and realized they wouldn't have the damage to bring him down um, before he could time walk out. So they just... Put him to sleep, and that's it. Oh, Misery. Invisibility. Another invisibility rune on this Earthshaker. This time it gets scouted out, though. The Bane was right there, so I doubt he'll be able to do too much with it in context of what we saw for the first blood, but uh, a very powerful rune in the hands of Earthshaker in the early levels. Definitely. Generally a powerful, uh, powerful rune on Earthshaker. Pretty much the entirety of the game. Fissure yeah. is just so crucial, and in the mid late game, an Echo Slam where you're invisible is pretty amazing, so... Yeah, but that's, that's a good point, I want to point out how how well he's done it being on the runes. Like, it's it's one thing that he gets invis, haste, invis, which you could say is a lucky rotation for the Shaker, but the fact is, he's on point with his uh, with his rune coverage here. And because of the way Alliance put their lanes, it's difficult for Secret to really contest the runes for now. So they're just taking full advantage of that. Now, this invis might not bring too much with it, but even though he doesn't get the kill, look at where Fly is. It's like, he can't even go in the lane with a safe laner in a five-minute game. Yeah, he has six, six CS hit. against 21. This bottom lane is completely falling apart for Secret. Yeah, Marana already has an Aquila, Brown Boots, and 650 gold to spare. We'll see what Bill Loda goes for, but already he's, uh, he's coming online. And also the rune control is just great news to stop Big Daddy from filling up that bottle. He's forced to bottle crow here as he puts it on to old Cardi there. Top lane, S4 in some trouble. He throws out the cogs, but it just doesn't matter. The slows from Chessie are way too much. He's now hit level 6. Viper Strike to start it off. Secures an easy kill, and Alliance pull further in their head now. 3 to nil as looks like we could see some more setup on fly down bottom. No, Misery was thinking about throwing a Fissure, but we'll save it for another time. We'll see how long... Looks like they're still hungry for the kill. At least Mystery is sticking around here. He's not really looking to rotate toward the mid lane. It looks like they feel like it's it's okay that Tiny gets good farm because they know their Viper and Marana are doing well. And as, another thing to note is that Io and Tiny are obviously what Io brings Tiny is more attack and movement speed to stay, stay on his target. But the heroes on the Alliance are actually fairly elusive. There's the Time Walk from Void, there's a Leap from Marana, then they have the Disengage Fissure, and Viper has a lot of slows even through BKB. He can bother Kuroki, so trading farm and giving Io Tiny a lot here might not even be that big of a deal, and it usually is. That's the threat of Io Tiny is when they get strong, they kind of take over the game, but I'm not even sure if they will. Kuroki's going to get chronoed yep. and Oh, arrow. man, they get carried so away by a Moonlight dead. Shadow, but can they bring him down? Nah, yes, they can. No Tail comes in, but just can't do enough to keep his buddy alive. S4 will hookshot forward, connects with the Cogs on Loda, but he has a leap. He'll stand his ground, just lay in the right clicks, and there's no way they'll find a counter kill here. Alliance will make it a one for nil exchange in the mid lane and take out that high-value target, who, of course, is the t farming tiny. Yeah, good hookshot from S4, though, here to uh, to save Big Daddy. I'm pretty sure he would have been a goner there as well from Alliance's rotation. But the hookshot and cogs pretty much disrupted the, the chase here from Alliance. However, they're still ahead by 4 and nil. They have 3,000 experience almost already. That's actually going really fast. 2,000 on the gold, and that's without claiming a tower. Just goes to show how much they're winning the lanes. Yep. And, and I'm still looking for... Oh. Will they have the kill here? Toss in the air. They just don't oh, have the damage. It. One point in backtrack is enough to buy him some time. They'll dive the trees. Support is inbound. Fissure comes in to disengage. Can Bulldog make the escape? He's fogged right now. Big Daddy taking a lot of damage from Ake. Kuroki will toss Misery out of the fray. Will Bulldog fall? Io finds it. Big Daddy will survive for now. Meanwhile, on the other side, Kuroki on the run, but no way he'll survive. Chessie joins the party, and he does get picked off. No Tail did TP back, and he actually survived it. It is a one-for-one one, tiny for voice. <laughs> When he poured it out, he was standing in the... This is a very fun place. Like, it, this never happens. He was standing here, in the middle of the lane, pouring out inside Dire Vision. Well, or they were all committed onto Kuroki, so I guess, I guess it worked out for him. But a close yeah. call. Only a few hit points to spare, and Secret will get their first kill on the board, but it does cost them their Tiny, who now has taken two tumbles, and uh, he's going to slow down his farm a little bit. Just glancing at the net worth, he is seated at number three right now, a thousand behind that of the Marana. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm wondering when we see Fly starting to uh, to get active. It's it's common for Storm that if you lose your lane, you play a little more farm intensive than if you're in the mid lane and you start roaming a lot. But I feel like his team is going to need him early on. He can't just stay here and farm for the next ten minutes. Then I think the the game is going to start falling apart. So 
When does Fly get involved, and is he on the active or the receiving Chrono, end? Chrono, Arrow, this should be a dead fly right here. Yep, certainly is. Killing Spree comes out for Loda, and Moonlight Shadow popped for good measure as they disengage, and could consider re-engaging if they were so inclined, but nope, they'll be happy with their one kill on Fly in this storm. Now 0-2-0. Zero, and zero. He is now level 6, but continuing to find kills that whole time. Chessie just farming away up top on this Viper, happy as a clam as he commences the last hit. Yeah, 51 CS for him as well as two kills, and that's including the TP rotation to the mid lane where he, he helped out. So he's definitely doing great this game so far in the Viper. Yep, and even Bulldog has found an, an okay amount of farm. Only 15 CS, but 0, 1, and 2. He now has power treads, and he's level 7. I think that's the really important thing. He had that Chronosphere come out in an early timing and used it to great success. Fissure just harasses Fire's Big Daddy and Kuroki in the mid, attack. and Alliance are angling to defend this tower if they overcommit for it. Yeah, Kuro and Big Daddy will at least do whatever they can to force some sort of reaction here. Nice usage of the spirits here from Big Daddy. Great harassment going on, on onto Bulldog. And maybe Secret will claim their first big objective of the game. The mid-tier 1 tower is always really important because it reduces the Dyer's ability to take Roshan and it gives generally more map control, but the reinforcements have arrived. Chessy a little late on the TP though, essentially wasting it. Yeah, and so with that Secret will just disengage and he walks right back towards the top lane. I think Secret wanted to put the pressure on while they know the Chronosphere is on cooldown, which is a great idea. The Radiant's problem is Alliance still have plenty of other top. heroes that can do a lot of damage and um, help break up the push. The Fissure is the big one, and also this Viper. Even without a Chronosphere, he is a force Dyer's to be reckoned with now with three points attack. in the Corrosive skin. Fo focusing him down is that much more difficult. Now moving straight into the mech, has a buckler, and of course will grab oh, the remaining four. pieces. As four caught by the Fissure, shot. will completely block him out. Bulldog hops forward, connects with the time walk. Arrow flies through as well, smacks S4 in the face, and sorry little clockwork, but you will die. Tier 1 tower in the mid gets denied. As you mentioned, still a minor victory for Secret, as that does get rid of the Roche access point, but the deny does limit, uh, limit the yield. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Worth noting, though, is that Fly still got a bit of farm in, the, in that time. and It's only 26 CS in an 11-minute game, but he had a really hard lane. So I think this is okay for now on the Storm Spirit. I'm going to put a little... I know I'm focusing on it a lot, but it's because Storm is such a tempo controller hero where either if you're playing the safe lane, you better get really good farm, or if you're not getting good farm, make space for someone else. Because with mediocre farm, this hero just isn't really that strong. And if you're running into Alliance's heroes in particular, they have Silence's Stuns, Chronosphere, Arrow. I, I, I would like to see some more activity coming out. And they also have Relocate available now on Big Daddy. So the opportunity to get pickoffs anywhere is, is there. If he jumps in and grabs someone with the Vortex, they can relocate in at the same time. Boom, it's a kill. There's like no way of responding. Even TP support is generally going to be too late because this combo just kills people really fast. Yeah. And Storm's one of those heroes, if he is uh, grabbing that early momentum, as you're mentioning, usually the Orchid first is the way to go. But in games like this, where you get the slow start and there are so many disables, silences, what have you, BKB is absolutely core. And I would be surprised to see him grab uh, anything other than a BKB first item. But even with that said, he's pretty damn far off the mark. No pieces towards it yet, and only 600 gold to spare. Power treads, null tally, and a couple of GG branches there. Uh, all Fly has to his name. So even if he wants to go BKB to be a little more aggressive and take some fights, we're 12 minutes in, and he is nowhere near a core item. And I guess the same could be said for, for S4. He was playing the off lane, but we're used to seeing S4 with a little more farm than this, of course, because he's used to play the mid lane, which generally gets more farm, but he was in a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one matchup. Only has 25 CS, though, because it was an impossible lane. Like, Clockwork just flat out doesn't win against Viper. It's one of the worst matchups for the hero. <laughs> yeah. So he doesn't have any items either. So who has the items? It's only Tiny. And you see it on the farm chart as well. Kuroki leading with 81. The next on, a, on Secret is 32. Yeah. On the Storm Spirit, they're just really trailing here. And yeah. with if they start losing the map control, I'm starting to wonder where they will find the comeback farm as well. Yeah, Tiny is a great late game carry with comeback potential, but you have to get there. He's stopped off for the Drum of Endurance, a, a, uh, a worthy stop off, but that slows down his Ag's timing. And for Tiny, not only does that uh, open up all the potential for team fights and damage to structures, but it's also sort of his battle fury. He lets him farm uh, with that cleave and just clear out the jungle so effectively. And He's still trying to come online and find that farming tool. S4, the trap has been set, but he doesn't. Right there, point blank arrow, Mystic Flare, and Clockwork will die before he even really knew what was going on. Pretty impressive first damage from Alliance as they now make it 8-1. to one, 13 minutes into this game, holding on to their 2,000 gold 
and experience lead, grouping up for a tier one tower push here in the top lane. Is there a trade available for Secret is the question. They're trying mid, Bulldog taking some good damage here, actually even relocating behind him. Wow, it's Courier flies in. And, wow, this was an awkward play. Oh, right. Now Big Daddy, he'll just fall. He gets silenced. They should be able to bring him down at least. Yep, a few more right clicks. Ake once again secures the kill on that Skywrath Mage, and that was a little ambitious from uh, Secret. I mean, they must have known that the Chrono had cooled down. It's been a long time since we've seen a Chrono. I don't, I don't know about that one. The good thing for Secret, though, is that I think the TP support from Alliance that came in might have prevented them from taking the tier 1 top tower. Else they could have perhaps got that, but... Okay. Oh, Arrow. Oh, it's going to connect on Fly! Oh, no. The long-range stun Misery coming in, and even the Echo okay. Slam used for that. That was just kind of a in-your-face dunk right there from Misery. That that stings a little bit. Getting into their heads as at the same time Bulldog okay. and Chessie oh. gathering up to kill off S4. This game is just out of hand for Secret. It's impressive that they're only 3,000 gold behind, to be honest. They're 10 kills behind. 5,000 experience only. But of course, they did claim the tier 1 tower mid, so they're ahead on towers, it which was means there's more them. unclaimed gold for Alliance. Yeah, of course, it does give them a little boost, but it was denied. So Radiant as these other tier 1 towers will fall uh, on the Radiant side of things, Alliance will really start to skyrocket their league. Loda pressuring the bottom tier 1, and even in the top lane, Chessie about to pressure that tower. Loda did stop off for a hand of Midas here. He went phase boots into a 14-minute Midas, but given they're so far ahead, I guess he figures, why not? I might as well accelerate my farm and tango with this tiny, since we're about on point so far. It's, it's kind of a Cloud9-esque play, I would almost say. That's That would be a classic thing for a Cloud9 carry to do at this point. Feel like you're in control of the game, expand it. Extend your lead with uh, with a Hand of Midas. And, and boys, we'll see if it's the right choice. I, I'm not sure I agree with it in this case, because I think for now, for Alliance, it's about riding the momentum. It's controlling the map and reducing the tiny IO chance of a comeback. And I don't know if Midas is the right choice in this situation. But we'll see. Arrow oh. almost hits Kuroki there. That could have been bad news bears, but... Just barely whiffs and uh, will hit a creep. But I, I do agree with you. Tiny is, is one of the, the strongest late game carries. And if they give him enough space, he will eventually recover and be a very scary threat. Of course, we're talking 45 minutes from now. Puppy will get caught in a chrono. Long range arrow flies through. And, uh, well, they don't even need it. So they pick up a stray support. But, yeah, I mean, we're talking like 45 minutes in the future. Tiny will be absolutely huge. Can they get there is the question. And that's where just continuing to control the tempo that is the name of the game for Alliance. They will group up in the mid lane here. Arrow flies through, won't connect on anyone, but still zones them a bit as they angle for some keen initiation. Void still with only level one chrono, it is stuck on that long two minute cooldown. But double damage on Chessie will more than make up for it in this upcoming skirmish here. Eggs for the tiny 1300 away, I believe. Let me check, yeah. So that's the first big item that Secret can look forward to. I don't think anything else is going to come up any anytime soon. Alliance sitting on the, so much stuff to use in the team fights, all their AoE abilities. They have the mech advantage coming in from the Viper, who also has a DD right now. But they still they still know their limits. The moment this rocket hits, they know that having all their heroes in pretty much half health and having used the mech, there's no point in risking this right now. Keep controlling the map. And which is what Ake is doing exactly right now, just counter-warding, I believe, the only ward the Radiant even oh, had on the map. Just... They're playing in the dark. Why? Oh no, he zips forward looking for the Mirana. He can't find it. Now he's out of mana. Does have a TP scroll and a couple of bottle charges left, but this will be a, a great escape here. Mana pool pretty much empty. There should be an arrow available. Void hops forward. No Chronosphere. If he had a Chrono, that would have been a sure kill, but they just can't catch up to him. So Fly survives by the skin of his teeth and does pull a lot of attention to the top lane. That's a five hero rotation coming out of Alliance. So creating some space around the map. Well played. Yeah, who's going to take the space though? Kuro obviously is currently running around the jungle. I think the goal for Secret here is just to maximize their farm by having the, um, the Tiny in the jungle as much as possible. He can farm that very effectively and then giving S4 some Dyer's space on the lanes. Tower. They want the clockwork to be able to initiate without just instantly dying. Like it pretty much doesn't matter right now who S4 engages on and how. He just gets exploded. Like by these alliance heroes, there's no way he can commit into a fight. But if yeah. he could at least get something like either a blade mail so they hit themselves or a tank ability item to stay alive, that would be a really big boon for uh, for secret here. Yeah, I, also, I like the, one yeah. point out, we haven't seen the fiend script yet. 
Uh, yeah. now we will. <laughs> and Puppy had just hit level 6 before he got picked off before, but is there follow-up here? There's the relocate. Puppy takes a silence. They still secure the kill onto Marana. It is Tiny that ends the streak and finds some bonus gold. Courier flying through. It won't get picked off. Mystic Flare comes in and will finish off the Wisp. Now Kuroki getting chopped down in the Chronosphere. There's an Echo Slam off to the side. Kuroki survives, just about to turn it around onto Bulldog, but Bulldog will go man mode and finishes him off. They lose their Skywrath in the fray on the opposite side of the fight, but Alliance will level it out. A two-for-two two trade, uh, Tiny and Wisp for the Skywrath and Marana. It's good to see Secret taking some initiative. This is what I was looking for, for them to try to find some sort of opening on the map and start using the relocate aggressively. It was Puppy who found the opening there with the Fiend script, and that's all it took for them to follow through with relocate, a storm jump, so storm became a part of the fights as well. And while it was a two for two, I think they should just be happy with that. Any even trade right now for Seeker is actually a good one, I believe. And yes. Anything that stops Alliance from furthering their lead. We see the graphs have kind of plateaued right around that 5k golden experience attack. lead, which is pretty significant, but not insurmountable. And it feels like it should be a lot more given it's 3 to 14. But Secret have been uh, really doing an effective job farming around the map, even though they don't have a huge amount of map control, as Tiny is now level 11 and has the Ag Scepter. He can let the farming commence, and now the relocates are, are really scary. We saw in that fight Kuroki and Void off on the side. It was really a, just a man mode going blow for blow, and Void came out ahead, but uh, Tiny showing us that he's a, a force Radiant's to be reckoned with and will only get stronger, attack. especially once he gets more points in Craggy. That's when uh, Void will need something more like a BKB to really go man mode and not fall victim to the Craggy stuns. We will see a smoke rotation from Alliance. They find Puppy. Viper will start things off, and Viper strike for good measure. His misery comes forward, connects with a Fissure. Takes a brain sap, but it just doesn't matter. Enchants his totem, smacks him in the face. Even a time walk forward is now Fly Hops in. He's out of mana. That's a Chronosphere. Mystic Flare, and it'll end up being a two for nil. Probably should have just let the Bane fall. Yeah, kind of a questionable jump there. There was pretty much nothing to be gained. There was no follow-up. There's no one he can solo like that, and he knew he was jumping into a Chrono, so. Yeah, it's, see, that's the second time now we've seen that Secret. That was odd. Yeah, hot, look, be very aggressive on Void when they should be at least somewhat confident there's a Chrono off cooldown or just about to cool down. Close enough where you should think twice about uh, hopping forward like that. They will make a defense up top, though. Bulldog comes straight forward. Kuroki connects with an Avalanche. But the time walk forward. He wants Big Daddy. Fissure will connect, and Big Daddy will fall. Kuroki's left ball by his lonesome. Jesse is here laying in the right click, has a Viper Strike available. Kuroki does what he can, but it just isn't enough. Mech gets popped, and they'll all get topped off as it's another two for nil. Onage is right, Mr. Announcer. Chessie now on a killing spree. Oh, boy. It's just getting worse and worse here for Team Secret, Sin. Just imagine what happens if Alliance get four more kills. Uh-oh. The dream is real. I can already see it happening. Oh, never mind. Well, the dream has well, died. Well, now they need two more kills. <laughs> Uh, yeah, two more kills. I guess uh, the secondary dream is alive for sure. But Bulldog looking for some vengeance, perhaps. He has a Mask of Madness now. Time walks forward once S4. Very but aggressive jump here. Yeah, follow up just isn't there. And even pulls the TP to the mid lane as uh, Big Daddy rejoins the party. But uh, looks like Bulldog here will go for the Ag Scepter just to reduce that Chronosphere. And I like this. They have plenty of damage to dump into the Chrono, so lowering that cooldown is uh, going to be pretty big for them coming into the mid game. But it also means he isn't getting the BKB we were talking about against the Titan. At least not anytime soon. And that means Secret have a couple of, of options on how to open the fight. I think it's very crucial to take out the Void so you don't get the Chrono turned on you. They have the Electric Vortex. Hookshot can buy some time as well. And then, of course, the Avalanche and Tiny can fight him face to face pretty much. I think if they were to just hit each other, Tiny would win the battle at this point. He's He is strong enough, especially with that plate mail. Um, but... I, I don't think Alliance will will allow the fights to turn out that way. They want to be the initiators rather than counter-initiating to whatever extent possible. And the moment they have their ultimates ready, they can just go for it. Moonlight Shadow can be the initiator, and then they just jump in with a Chrono. Yeah, and now we see an Egg Scepter up on Chessie, so Viper strikes a plenty, a Blink Dagger on Misery's Earthshaker, and even a Maelstrom out on Lotus Marana. The item progression on the Dire side is looking pretty damn good. Arrow flies through, will be off the mark, but does just scout things out a little bit and uh, keep Secret on their toes as they move into the trees and Alliance continue to stay grouped up as uh, the five-man Dota commences. They want this Tier 1 tower mid and uh, maybe they'll find it here. There is a Radiant Glyph available. Will Secret choose to use Dyer's it and make a defense is a completely another question. 
Viper Strike out on Kuroki. That'll zone him out. They do burn the Glyph. And they will go for a deny here. I think Alliance can just go up, press forward, commit to the tower. There's the Chrono, but Bane gets the deny. Nicely played by Puppy. It'll cost him everything and anything as he falls. Kuroki, he takes the Mystic Flare. In comes Misery with the dunk. Doesn't do too much damage, but it's enough to finish off Kuroki. It's a three for nil. Now has four on the run. It's a four for nil. The only one left alive is, uh, it's not Fear. That's Fly, and he's on the low ground. Takes a bash. Takes a fissure, and oh boy, it's a five for nil, a full five-man wipe as Alliance set their sights on Roshan. We had a 420 somewhere along the way there, but that quickly <laughs> passed. Oh man, now things oh, looking boy. very grim for Team, Team Secret, Secret. are just flat out getting outplayed in this game, outmaneuvered, outlaned. Even the individual plays, it's not just the decision making, but the individual plays, it just seems like Alliance are, are sharper today so far. A yeah. couple of uncharacteristic mistakes, I think, coming out from the individual players of Secret, and it could just be because they need more time to get used to playing together, but yeah. it seems like Alliance are just on top of their game. Even playing with these two new players that, they have, that they've started training with, the two stand-ins here, it still, it still looks like a very coordinated squad that know what they want in the game, whereas Secret, to me, seems a little bit more disjointed with... Th there seems to be no clear goal, if you know what I mean, in the game for them. It's, yes. it's a little more random how they're approaching. Yeah, I, I think the Fight. biggest problem uh, was really this Storm Spirit pick. We, we both saw in the draft it was a fourth pick Storm and kind of had that, oh, that's that's interesting. I wonder how they're going to work this in. And it's it's really backfired. Flies level 11, now has a point booster. He's been forced to just get any kind of tanky item he can, not even going for the BKB. I, I guess this will be a Bloodstone, but I mean, him even completing the Bloodstone at this point seems like, a, like a, an ambitious uh, kind of a plan to try and execute. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what the plan is at this point. It's 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 strange to see a game with IO Tiny where the IO Tiny lane actually goes pretty well, and they just seem to have no there's no impact on the game as far as movement goes. And it's not because Secret are lacking opportunities to initiate, like as far as their draft goes, right? They have Hookshot, they have Storm Jumping, and they even have Fiend Script. Like all the three other heroes set up for relocate ganks, but they're just so contained on their own half of the map that it seems they never really got out on, on the aggressive here, Team Secret. And I don't think their lineup is that good at playing defensively, at least not with this amount of advantage that speaks for itself. But yeah. they want to be the ones finding the openings, not the ones counter-initiating. Because when you counter-initiate into a Skywrath Silence, a Chrono, and a Fissure, there's just so many ways that it, it's very difficult to choose the avenue you want to go from because there seems to be a counter in every single direction. Yeah, so if you don't jump and get a kill first, it just seems like you end up being counter counter initiated. Yeah, and then Moonlight it Shadow really deployed, matter. Secret are aware of it, but Kuroki, he gets caught by a poison attack. That sets up for the Viper Strike. He will get tethered to the Wisp, but Kuroki taking a lot of damage here. Relocate will save him. And that means Secret are on the back foot, and now Misery finds Puppy, connects with a Fissure, setting up for allies nearby. Void pops forward, has a Chrono Spear, shouldn't need it just for a kill on the Bane. Brain Sap buys Puppy some time, but there's just no support inbound. Clockwork is off to the side near the side shot, but even if he hook shots in, it'll be to his demise. And will it even be enough to save Puppy? Arcane Bolt, enough to finish him off as Ake gets another kill up on the scoreboard there. And that oh, makes it is, oh. 4 to 24. Whoa, they almost find S4. Thought he was going to go looking for him there. It looked a little bit like it. Now Loda. They're just taking turns at getting really close. But oh, not going Echo Slam on a solo fly. And there's the Fissure. They've got the stun lock to bring him down. That's another kill on the Storm Spirit. Great setup for Misery. And I just want to point out this stat right now. Misery is 2-1 and 17. He's been involved in 19 of the 25 kills on the field. And that is, that is just damn impressive. I think Misery is at his most impressive when he gets to play roaming. Uh, I, he didn't necessarily play completely roaming in this game as he put the most of his emphasis on the bottom lane, but just the fact that he's hidden, if that makes sense. He always comes out of the fog and looks for the kills. He's not the visible kind of lane support. Mm -hmm. He is the surprise support who comes out of nowhere. We saw something support. similar. Like <laughs> we saw something similar at ESL1 this year when he was playing uh, Bane, I believe, in the game against Vici Gaming. He was all over the place in his Bane, constantly moving around the map in the shadows and finding those setups for the team. Mm -hmm. And sh that's because of that. Heroes like Shaker, like Bane, are just perfectly suited for misery because they they just Whoa. work so well with that playstyle as okay that's that, a dive that chrono <laughs> oh god those look for s4 here mystic flare comes out fly hops forward 
Uh, creates some space for his clockwork, but it doesn't matter. The poison from Viper still brings him down. Kuropi, uh, Kuroki and No-Tail coming forward. They get the kill on Skywrath, but now they'll get initiated on. Big Daddy goes down very quickly. It's Kuroki versus the world, and looks like the world will find the better of him. Toss on to Chessie, but he's got plenty of magic resistance with that four points and corrosive skin, and it'll be a four-for-one trade. This Tier 2 tower will go down, and I think we could be not too far off of a GG. Secret don't seem to have too many tricks left up their sleeves. Games that are 29 to 5 at 28 minutes tend to end shortly after. <laughs> I guess that's a stat that K-pop can agree with. Yeah. And it looks like it is going to be Barracks attempted here. Storm did survive that, and he is ready to jump in and do some harassment here. Puppy with an Enfeeble. No buyback down available for just a little bit. So he will be down for 20 seconds. Tier 3 tower falls. And Alliance will back out. They don't want to overcommit here. Chessy caught inside the Fiend's grip. The team is nearby. A long-range fissure just barely connects on Puppy. It's enough to interrupt him, and they'll turn it around. And Chessy says, you grip me. I, uh, I've i got support, man. I'll, I'll, I'll see your Fiend's grip and raise you a fissure. How's that sound, Puppy? And he even had the Aegis, so that <laughs> kill wouldn't even have brought anything with it. I, If Fly committed to trying to get that kill, he might have got himself killed as well. So. Yep. Man. I think it's just a matter of desperation at this point from, from Secret. They really just try to do anything they can. Now, they will probably get Chessy here. Yeah, remember, he has the Aegis. There's the Chrono Sphere. Mystic Flare flies through, finishes off the Storm. Storm Spirit will buy back straight away. Bulldog now goes in on the S4. Chessy finally goes down. The Power Cogs are actually what do it. But there's the dunk from Misery. So much damage onto Kuro and Puppy. and Or, pardon me, Kuro and No-Tail. And they'll both take a tumble. Now S4 outside of the base. It looks like he'll get clicked down. There's only one left. It's Fly. He's scooting back to safety. And safety he'll find. They'll turn their sights onto Puppy. And yeah, he gets picked off. This is just a massacre. There you go. GG well played. And Alliance, they just slap Team Secret around in their debut. 35 to 5. It is a pretty one sided performance here, Cinderin. Yeah, that game was not even close. Now, the question is if it's just, you know, any team can have a bad game. Uh, they are, of course, a new squad and they need to start playing together. Uh, but. As a first showing, I guess a little bit unfortunate for Secret here. I don't think it does their players justice because they have some exceptionally good players. But the team play, like I said, as far as a, having a goal in the game and finding the openings and the overall strategy of the laning just didn't really work in their favor. And the result of it is just a very one-sided game. Alliance have been really impressing me today. And that's not to say that we don't expect a lot out of them, but they are playing with two new players and they 